Hey there folks, Ral here. In the background you'll see some gameplay from Planetside 2 as I share some thoughts on better gaming. And transparency is what we'll be talking about today. It's kind of a fun thing to discuss because we each have our own thoughts on what is transparent enough when it comes to game design. And for this discussion, we're going to define it as how much information is shared between developer and the player. Transparent game development is a concept that's seen more and more play nowadays, especially within the smaller studios. This is due in no small part to Kickstarter being used to fuel many titles, the ubiquity of social media, the rise of early access, which we've actually talked about in the past, as well as a way to differentiate yourself from some of the faceless corporations that push out the same recycled formula each year. The more you involve your community with your game, the more agency they feel that they have over the development. The more they feel their concerns about the state of the game will be listened to and the more engaged and passionate they'll feel about the game in general, which creates a better community. At least, that's how it should work, but it doesn't. Joyce Brothers was a psychologist that did a lot of work starting in the 1950s, and she only recently died in 2013, but during her time, she wrote that, The marvelous thing about human beings is that we're perpetually reaching for the stars. The more we have, the more we want. And for this reason, we never have it all. When game developers choose to interact with us, be it to show us something cool that they're working on or to answer a question, the response is rarely, hey, wow, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's more like, hey, that's really cool. And by the way, when are we going to see X, Y, or Z? Give me, give me, give me more, more, more. This is the double edge of transparency. The more you give, the more you share, the more people want from you. When we've invested money in a product, a lot of these concerns are legitimate because you want to know that people aren't just going to run away with your money, and nowadays you practically have to take part in transparent development if you want to take advantage of crowdfunding or early access. But what I'm talking about here goes well beyond the point of legitimate concern and desire to be informed because official posts like game updates, server downtime, hero rotations, or sales and special events, those are all technically transparency because transparency is really a one-way street. It's me showing you what I'm doing, but that's not what many of us desire. Whenever I post a video that asks what type of features you'd like to see in a game, what sorts of ideas you have, I get an absurd amount of comment responses because we all have our little visions of what the game can or should be. And since we have these really open paths of communication with the developers, unless they shut us out, we become the backseat drivers of game development. It's because we have these ideas of what the game should be that creates conflicts. Because feedback is one thing, but too often we can be cynical, unappreciative, and completely unhelpful. And lots of developers, they have personal accounts from which they share bits and pieces of information, you know, share what they're working on. So it's really sad to see comments like, why are you working on this when you could be working on this other thing that I think is more important? Doesn't even matter what the person's job is. They could be in charge of art and will still harass them about game balance, broken code, account issues, anything else that's completely unrelated to what they are in charge of. And it doesn't help that the internet tends to make it difficult for us to humanize with these people, and it lets us be really nasty without repercussions. So I'm not at all surprised when some devs just stop posting altogether, because why subject yourself to the abuse, right? Interacting with the community could possibly be in your job description, but catering to entitled internet children certainly isn't. The compromise that's seen a lot in development nowadays is a roadmap. And the concept is solid. You lay out some features that you're trying to get into the game, you know, maybe you give a relative time frame for completion, and ta-da, you have transparency. For Planetside 2 in particular, the intention of the roadmap was originally to outline features that they were thinking about implementing within a flexible time frame, and also let the players offer feedback and vote on which features should take priority. Now, like I said, it's a solid concept, but for all intents and purposes, it was an example of a roadmap done poorly. The first mistake was that the roadmap had specific months set for different features. And of course, when problems appear that put development on hold or push back your timetable, you aren't going to be able to deliver on time. And unfortunately, this happened pretty often. However, the real intention of adding dates in the first place was to give people a list of priorities. It wasn't actually to give them a delivery date. But the player base doesn't take things that way, because if you give them a date like fall 10th, they'll be frothing at the mouth and not communicating the purpose of the roadmap clearly enough really didn't do the devs any favors. 
Now the second mistake was allowing players to vote on features that were going to get implemented anyway. And again, this was poor communication on the part of the developers because the intention of the voting system was actually to allow devs to gather feedback from the players on potential features and get a feel for what they wanted to see first. But what the players saw was a way to control the game's development. And the ordeal with implants was probably the biggest one that I could think of. The implant system originally had a place on the roadmap among a bunch of other features. And the devs really needed a way to continually generate revenue, so this was definitely a feature that was going to go in the game, there's no question about it. But players didn't like that implants were going to cost money, and they definitely didn't like the first iteration that was proposed. So that feature was downvoted to zero or less, and then later, after heavy revisions that cost the team absurd amounts of development time, it was pushed live. And it was a feature that the community really just wanted to see disappear, and I think I actually made two videos criticizing the implant system before it went live. But as you can probably guess, implants go live, the player base was not happy about being ignored, and I put ignored in finger quotes though because, like I said, that feature was heavily revised based on the player's criticism. It just didn't not happen, which is what a vocal portion of the player base really seemed to want at the time. This created a lot of bad blood for a long, long time, and you can still see hints of it today. A much safer way to be transparent in your development process would be to just keep a blog, or something similar, and then you focus the community's feedback. So, Seven Days to Die does this pretty well. Granted, they are a very small game, so it's much easier to do this sort of thing. But every once in a while, one of the developers posts a screenshot, or a video alongside some text, talking about what they're working on and what kind of progress that they've made on certain features. This creates a hype train every single time, because players can talk about, speculate, and offer feedback on what's actively being worked on. At the same time, these little updates usually fall under one bigger planned update that encompasses many features. And when delays cause that big plan to be pushed back, it can be forgiven because the player doesn't feel like they're forgotten about due to a lack of information. In my opinion, this is a good way to handle transparent development, and a lot of studios handle it this way as well. If you control how much information you share, control what decisions you allow the player base to make for you, then you set expectations and you avoid conflicts. You can still take in feedback, you should still take in feedback, and you can share updates as they happen. It helps minimize the downside of people on the internet not really being people on the internet. There is, unfortunately, a such thing as too much transparency, and if we as human beings were a little bit more content with what we have, a little less pessimistic about what we don't, and a bit more understanding in general, then maybe a more transparent approach would be worth the effort. But right now, it's really easy to cut yourself on the double edge. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any thoughts on transparent development, you can always go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.